A very good evening to you, Balesa and to our viewers watching SABC News. We are at the World Economic Forum where a range of issues are discussed, but one that keeps on coming to the fore is health. Because although a lot of people don't often associate health with our economy, we know from the United Nations that about $2.4 trillion is every year on the African continent due to its debt burden. There are solutions to try and come up um, there are ways to try and come up with solutions for this challenge. And I'm joined by Dr. John Ngesa Gong from the Africa Public Health Foundation. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. If you could talk to us about the foundation, the works it does, how it was established, and what the objectives of that foundation are. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak with SABC. First of all, uh, the Africa Public Health Foundation that will be announced at this forum, the World Economic Forum, is designed to support the mission and vision of the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Brief Africa CDC, which was established after the Ebola outbreak in West Africa by the head of states of, of Africa. The goal of that was clearly uh, to support member states to strengthen their health systems and capabilities in order to better respond to, to disease outbreaks that we learned from West Africa that was very devastating. The Ebola outbreak that occurred in West Africa costed us $53 billion in two years. That's a significant loss for the continent. Clearly, we can never achieve our universal health coverage goals without strong systems in place there. But we have to be innovative. That's why the foundation is very important. The African Public Health Foundation is, provides a platform for partnership and it also provides a platform for innovation. Partnership with the private sector, partnership with philanthropists, and partnership with the industry. That's where we think you can leapfrog public health systems on the continent to better prepare the continent against disease threats. What challenges did you encounter when this fund is being put together, especially if you're dealing with more than one country? So that's a very interesting question. When you're dealing with multiple countries, it gives an advantage, first of all, that of mass. The continent, you're dealing with a continent of 1.2 billion people, 55 member states. So there's power right there if we know how to harness it. But the limitation and challenge is that it takes time. It takes everybody to come on board so that we can agree, look in the one direction and see the same thing. I mean, that's important. It's an important challenge to overcome. But if we do that, then it has tremendous advantages of leapfrogging the continent. Okay. When it comes to leapfrogging, um, obviously we're at the World Economic Forum, they're talking about the fourth industrial revolution a lot. How much of a role is it going to play, not only in this foundation, but in the healthcare sector on the African continent going forward? Tremendous. The continent is moving speedily towards integration. You've heard about the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. You know about the free movement of people on the continent that the African Union is moving forward with together with the open skies. Those are tremendous avenues and opportunities for the continent. However, we have to keep in mind that underneath that, you require a strong and resilient public health system because it means someone in East Africa can easily be in North Africa or West Africa within, uh, within hours. Okay. Ethiopian Airlines, just for example, transported 10.5 million people last year across Ethiopia, and other airlines are, are, are doing the same on the continent. So that provides a strong economic opportunity and growth for the continent, but it also has an underlining, underlining risk for disease spread very easy if we do not have resilient, strong public health system. But innovation is central to this. Innovation that says, how can we use technology to advance and make sure that we obtain the right data in a timely fashion and act speedily? Okay. You touched on the issue of universal health coverage a little bit earlier on. In South Africa, we are trying to find a way to implement national health insurance to try and ensure that there is um, universal health coverage. What challenges are there in trying to achieve that? And do you believe that by 2030, that goal of universal health coverage can really be reached? I'm hopeful that by 2030, we can achieve the goals of universal health coverage. I don't think we have a choice. We have to work to, towards creating strong political will and translating the strong political will to, into a strong political commitment to achieve the universal health coverage goals by the year 2030. It is essentially about primary health care. 
we should invest in primary health care and make the citizens of each country in Africa own their own health, which is prevention. Okay, which means we have to be very strong upfront in educating people on their, their health challenges, how to manage their own health. That way, the hospital is not an area where people truly go there to uh, to find uh, a solution, but rather the, the end game where you probably go there for unique situation. Which means uh, the hygienic situations. Which means educating people on how to eat properly. Which means we have improving sanitation and education right down to the primary school level there. So I think there's a huge opportunity there, but we have to have a strong political commitment and a drive to make this happen. Dr. John Nkenga Song, thanks so much for your time on SABC News. He's the director of the African CDC and working with that Africa health foundation that's going to be launched in february 2020 giving us an insight into what's behind that it's time for a short break the news continues after that it's good evening from me for now